Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again with another episode of the AC Milan career mode here on Xbox One. And as you can see, we're in the midst of the January transfer window. And we've had an offer and a contract offer accepted from Sebastian Giovinco. But I'm just holding out for the time being. We're stalling on that because there are a lot of players we want to potentially bring in. And I'm not sure he's at the top of our list. As you can see, we're moving potentially moving on Volta Bursa to Parma. They did, in fact, accept that £3.4 million offer. We have had the transfer offer of £2 million plus Kakar accepted for Adam Yayic from Roma. So we're going to offer him a contract. Now, just quickly, there was an episode of uh, the My Player went up last night at 9 o'clock. I know some of you may have missed it because there was a lot of Champions League football going on last night. So feel free to check the channel page if, uh, if you did miss that, by the way. And if you missed yesterday's um, me message yesterday's episode from this series then there's a, a little annotation in the bottom left hand side of your picture to take you to that video but as you can see the offer for Giovanni Dos Santos has been accepted as well which I believe was £9 million pounds plus Pelosi so uh, hopefully that can go through as well as you can see confirmation of the uh, the Volta Bursa deal to Parma £3.4 million pounds has been confirmed so uh, we're using some of that to go towards the uh, the Giovanni Dos Santos and the Adam Yeh deals but uh, the first game of the episode it's time to get back to uh, to Serie A action. We're actually playing Sassuolo away from home. Now uh, Sassuolo aren't the biggest of sides in Italian football to say the least but they do have a couple of very very good players that can cause us a lot of troubles. You may remember their uh, their winger Berardi actually scored four goals in one game in real life against AC Milan to get Sassuolo a 4-3 win so I definitely was aware of the threats that they posed and uh, Zaza he's going to play in Berardi himself and actually sots the ball underneath the goalkeeper into the back of the net in just the fifth minute. And we in fact fall behind against the tiny minnows of Italian football and that wasn't really the sort of uh, beginning to the game that I wanted to have but fortunately just a few minutes later Andrea Poli is able to break free from the midfield slots through Balotelli brings it down in his path beautifully unfortunately the dink finish can't quite go in the follow-up header wasn't very good and Balotelli just kind of fell over next to the goalkeeper when uh, trying to knock in the second rebound so unfortunately we uh, we weren't able to get ourselves back on level terms but a nice flowing passing move ended up in Barrow getting absolutely crunched from behind uh, there wasn't too much contact, as you'll see from the replay, but it was enough to send him down. And it was a yellow card, not a red. As you can see, there were players on either side of Balotelli, but... Uh it wasn't the best of challenges, was just inside the box as well, which crucially is uh, the deciding factor here because a free kick from that distance, that close to goal, we probably wouldn't have scored. But Mario steps up to the plate, smashes it into the back of the net and we bring ourselves back on level terms at 1-1. And it was mainly just a continuous barrage of white attack from then on in. You can see Senad Lulic is going to put us 2-1 in front just a couple of minutes after we were able to grab our first. So a couple of goals back to back inside uh, kind of 10 minutes of each other with the first touch from from uh, Lulitz there was really really nice to then slot it across the goalkeeper and uh, into the bottom corner but Sassuolo proving that uh, they can still offer a threat offensively if they so wish and a uh, goalkeeper there Victor Guita coming out all Superman-esque with his double punch and absolutely missed the ball fortunately it fell to a defender and we went in at half time with that 2-1 lead just about intact but uh, we headed into the second half hoping to extend that lead if we possibly could because clearly Sassuolo have already breached our borders once and uh, threatening to do so yet again. So if we could extend the lead to perhaps 3-1 or maybe even 4-1, then that would put me at rest. And, uh, you know, we can uh, we can relax a little bit and maybe play some more expansive football, try and see what the team is all about at this stage of the season. But somehow that's their advantage there as Montalivo gets absolutely munched. They hit the post, unfortunately. The follow-up guy is offside. How that was their advantage for their guy two-footing into uh, Ricardo Montalivo, I have genuinely absolutely no idea. But fortunately, the ball... After going into the back of the net, the ball or the goal didn't count. But uh, we almost got ourselves that 3-1 lead there. Montalivo involved again, actually. And uh, unfortunately, the goalkeeper was able to dive back and pounce on it. But it wasn't to matter. We did take the 2-1 win and we will take the three points on that one. So it's back to the transfer action. And uh, we're actually going to get a transfer off the, uh, for Alberto Pelosi here. But I'm going to turn it down because we're trying to use him as a make weight for that Giovanni Dos Santos deal. Oh, a couple of you have said in the comment section prior to uh, Palmer, actually, as I can see here, uh, actually, I forgot it was Palmer as well. They've already signed uh, Bursa from us. They're actually getting uh, Cristante on a short-term loan. I think that's three months. I'm not entirely too sure. But uh, as you can see, Adam Yates is being confirmed now. £2 million plus Kakao. I know a couple of you were a bit disgruntled at the fact that I was letting Kaká go, but he hasn't been top-notch for me. So uh, I'm just going to let him go, as is Alberto Pelosi leaving the club and Giovanni Dos Santos coming in. We're bringing in two players that are young, 
very, very talented and have room for growth as well. And because those two players are coming in, unfortunately, the deal for Sebastian Giovinco isn't going to go through. But we didn't have much money left, or so I thought. But having jiggling the, uh, or having a jiggle with the transfer budget, knocking the wage budget down a lot, we actually freed up quite a bit more money to, uh, to perhaps bring in another signing. Now, a signing that I do want to bring in in this transfer window, and I'm very, very glad that uh, we had that little bit of cash left over, is a centre-back. Of course, Zapata is out for four months with a broken and tailbone. Our on loan centre back Matthias Silvestre is out for four weeks so we're only left with Victor Ruiz and um, oh, what's his face? Victor Ruiz and Adil Rami who also in fact is a loan signing as well so will be leaving us in the summer. So we do need centre backs not only for the rest of this season on a short term fix but for a long term fix as well. And as you can see we're putting in an offer for Phil Jones. He does have a lot of potential. Jan Vertonghen is already an established centre back. Uh, uh, Nicholas Nkulu is the other player we put a bid in for. He's not necessarily the best and not necessarily got the best potential but is a solid enough rotation player and uh, Holder, Holger Bad Stuber is a very, very good centre-back as well. And also there's a couple of centre-backs from Juventus that I throw a couple of bids in for. Obviously, they've got Chiellini and Ogbonna as their main two, and uh, Barzali as well. So Martin Caceres and, of course, as well, Leonardo Benucci, who, in fact, I've used this in form on Ultimate Team this year and was very, very impressed by it. And you would presume, considering the growth in career mode, Benucci's normal stats would, in fact, grow and maybe even perhaps surpass the uh, the stats of his inform on Ultimate Team. So he's probably the one I would more like to bring in as opposed to the pace of Martin Caceres of the two. But perhaps we'll bring in Jan Vertonghen if we possibly can. Maybe even Phil Jones and uh, perhaps Nicholas and Kula as well. They're just the batch of players that I've gone in for. But uh, the next game in the episode is actually a, a cup game in the Coppa Nazionale. As you'll be able to see, it's the Italian round of 16 and uh, we've had Juventus go through there. As you can see, Genoa have beaten Udinese. A couple of other teams involved there as well. They kind of disappeared off the screen quicker than I could uh, quicker than I could read them out. But Hellas Verona, we've played them in uh, in the league already this season. And uh, they actually gave us a bit of a tough test. So hopefully we can uh, come out of this game with a better performance and uh, still a decent result. And Giovanni Dos Santos and Adam Yeic were both involved in this game. And uh, Lacazette is going to set up Adel to Rapt here. It was a really nice move to have Dos Santos involved. And uh, Erby Manilson whips it in. And unfortunately that effort from... Uh, from Adult Raps just went past that far post. But Dosano is involved again here, whipping in that free kick into the box. It's going to drop to Sulimantari, and he's just going to drive for the line. Lovely step over inside. Going to keep going, try and square it across. Good initial save from the goalkeeper, but uh, Senad Lulic is going to be able to pounce on the rebound. And it's the driving determination of... Um, of Sully Montari there that was really the deciding factor in the fact that that chance even came about, let alone that we were able to uh, to get a goal from it. Just that absolute power to get to the line. Fortunate with the deflection off the goalkeeper that it failed to Lulic, none of the three defenders around him, but still, you have to take the opportunity when it presents itself, and that is exactly what he did. And Lacazette here, unfortunately, doesn't take the opportunity when it presents itself. Adam Yeyes might be able to, but he doesn't. He kind of snatches at it and smashes it wide of that far post, and unfortunately, we stay at 1-0. And uh, Marquinhos involved here. It's actually Hellas going to have a bit of a venture forwards, a rare venture forwards. And it's actually going to be quite a good move. There are so many passes involved in this one. Jankovic is in, and it's a tidy finish underneath Christian Abiati to bring them back on level terms just after the, just after the hour mark at 1-1. And that was all that was going to happen for the rest of 90 minutes. Now, in the Coppa Nazionale, it goes to extra time, similar to the League Cup in England. Now, brought on Rubinho and Abate for Adam Yeh. So actually pushed the Chile up from right back into that right mid spot and pull, put a bar on at right back hopefully to try and make those overlapping runs because he'll have the pace and the stamina to do so and as you can see he's pushing inside here he's plays the ball to Lacazette who comes ever so close to getting us a second goal and in front and hopefully through to the next round of the Coppa Nazionale but Rubinho is involved here both substitutes are playing well as are both uh, both new signings and Lacazette's involved again steals it away from the defender lovely turn inside the next one goes for the shot across goal and he just can't quite get the accuracy on it yet again and then unfortunately we commit a foul and uh, the chance is gone but it went to penalties then after 120 minutes and hopefully we can progress through to the next round of the Coppa Nazionale. It's a very, very tough competition to win considering there are still quite a few big teams in there. You've got the likes of Juventus and Roma and Napoli, etc. All the teams that are up at the, uh, the top of the table or there and thereabouts is still in the competition. There have been that many giant killings. So it's going to be a very, very tough competition to win. But still, if we can win any silverware in this first season at Milan, you have to say that that could be classed as a success. We're not necessarily going to come anywhere near the title, although we are there and thereabouts when it comes to Champions League positions. We're not going to win the Champions League, I can pretty 
pretty safely hand on heart say that that's not going to happen. We could still have a decent run in the competition. We're at the group stage and uh, we could still, you know, a quarterfinal uh, appearance in the Champions League would be very, very good indeed. But as you can see, we are through to the quarterfinals of the Copa Nazionale with a 5-3, no, 4-2 penalty win over uh, over Hellas Verona. Unfortunately, it's really weird. I don't like the way that it kind of shows the pens as, uh, as goals, genuine goals on the score sheet at the end. That really annoys me. As you can see, Roma, Napoli, uh, Juventus, Genoa, Inter, Palermo and Lazio are all through alongside ourselves into the quarterfinals of the Coppa Nazionale. And the win earlier on in the episode in the league has helped us move up to third in the table. And we sit just one point away from Napoli top. As you can see, all of the top five teams are in the quarterfinals of the Coppa Nazionale. So five of the top five of the eight teams are the top five in the league. So it definitely is a very, very tough competition to win, but something I would very much like to do so. But that's going to bring today's episode to a close, guys. Please do feel free to leave the video a like if you could be so kind. I know this one was a little bit all over the place. I do apologise for that. But uh, if you missed yesterday's episode, there's a link on screen over the previous episode uh, tab there on the right-hand side. There's an annotation there. If you want to subscribe to the channel, we'd like to see more of this series and also the My Player series, which runs every Tuesday evening, Thursday evening, Saturday and Sunday lunch times, then uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button. There's a link in the description, your normal subscribe button and an annotation on screen on the left-hand side. And if you don't follow me on Twitter already, then feel free to do so at Chesnoy Gaming. It's the Twitter handle and there's a link to that in the description as well. But that's all for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you tomorrow with another AC Milan career mode episode and crucially as well, another My Player episode in the evening to boot.